Hello everyone, this is David Smith from Motive Machine Works. Today we're going to be talking about how to indicate your Heimer tip or your probe tip on a vertical milling machine and why you need to do that and also we're going to talk about what total indicated runout is which is uh, goes into the reasoning of why you need to actually indicate the uh, tip itself. And all you're going to need today to do this is a magnetic base with test indicator on it and you're also going to need an allen key that fits inside of your either your Heimer or your probe tip so uh, we're going to take, a, take you to the surface plate we're going to draw a quick demonstration uh, with the pen and paper uh, about why you need to do this and then we're actually going to take you inside the machine and show you how to do it okay so what TIR is is total indicated reading uh, also referred to as TIR or runout, commonly in the manufacturing world, is basically you have the spindle of your machine here with the center line of rotation of the spindle. And basically, when you put on a new probe tip uh, or even a probe from the factory, uh, for either a Heimer or a uh, actual uh, Renishaw style probe, or any other type of probing system for that matter. Um, basically, when you put a new um, tip on there, that the world we live in is not perfect, and there are tolerances for everything. So there's straightness tolerances for the actual tip itself, there's tolerances for the spindle, there's tolerances for either the collet or the uh, holder that you're putting your actual Heimer or probe into and there's obviously tolerances on the actual ball of the Heimer itself or the probe tip or whatever type of uh, operation that you're using. So basically, if we have, you know, pretend this is a ball here for, for the Heimer tip or the probe, um, if we have, when you screw a new tip on here, if it's not perfect from the factory again you're stacking all of the tolerances on there as discussed earlier so when this spins this could actually as this spins uh, clockwise or counterclockwise this could actually be running out back and forth like this you know typically if you're just going to screw a new tip on it's probably going to be within about two or three thousandths of an inch uh, 0 0.002 to 0 0.003 now it could be slightly better than that it could be slightly worse than that but from my experience that's typically about where it is because there's so many tolerances stacked together that there's no way it's ever going to be perfect so uh, without further ado we're going to show you how to indicate it in and you'll see why you need to do that in just a moment okay so as you can see here we are in hand jog mode on the machine uh, hopefully you uh, know how to do that much uh, what we need to do here is we actually need to, in the X direction, which is left to right, and the Z direction, which is up and down, uh, we actually need to find the center line of the ball according to this test indicator. So to do that, all we're going to do is jog the Y axis until we see some movement on the indicator on the bottom down here, obviously. Uh, and if you want to set the indicator at about a 5 to 10 degree angle, otherwise you'll have sign error. And if you want to learn more about sign error, there are plenty of information, or, uh, informational videos about that on the internet. So um, what you need to do here, we're just going to roughly get this to zero right now, and we're in about thousands of an inch jog mode. Now we're going to jog back and forth in the X direction. And what we're actually trying to do is sweep it to find the high spot. So as you can see, I'm going from left to right only. And you can see here, as I'm going one direction, we about hit the peak it is right about there. So what we need to do now is zero out the Y direction on that uh, line right there. So now we know we're on the center X uh, on the X direction, which is left to right. Now we're going to go up and down here and do the same thing. And as you can see, it's about at the 3000th mark in the yellow uh, section of the indicator here where our high spot is. So now to zero that out, we're going to do that on the z-axis this time. Uh, see up and down, right about there. So once again, we're going to zero the y. And if we did this correctly, right there is the center line of the part. Uh, 
So now we are centered on the ball up and down in Z, and we are centered on the ball left to right in X. And as you can see, the indicator is moving about a thousand of a, a thousandth and a half to two thousandths of an inch. So that's about our TIR uh, or total indicated reading. Um, and to uh, fix that, it works similar to a four jaw chuck on a manual lathe uh, with independent jaws, basically. So basically these four set screws in here are what determine how centered this ball is. So in order to change that, you need to figure out uh, uh, a good place to start is to always find your high spot. So our high spot is right about there. So that we know that this side needs to be loosened and this side in the back needs to be tightened. So you want to just crack it loose just a little bit because it really doesn't take much and then make it very, very lightly tight again. Uh, we might even be able to back that off maybe about an eighth of a turn or so, just a, just a little bit. And then we're, on this side, we want to tighten it. So the goal here, uh, actually, I, I was backwards there. So we want to actually loosen this side and tighten this side. As you see, we just made it a little bit worse. There we go. So we want to focus on getting two sides even first before we worry about getting it perfect. So as you can see from 180 degrees from here to here, we are now about uh, very close. We are probably about three tenths, so we're going to crack this, uh, we're going to tighten this just another hair. That's probably good, right about there. Um, about the half thousandths marker on both ends of the spectrum here. Okay, so now what we need to do is focus on the other two, which we did not touch yet. And to do that, we're going to crack this loose, and that just about has it perfect. So as you can see here, uh, our indicator is now pretty much stuck right at the half thousandth mark. There might be a couple tenths of play in there. And depending on the world of parts that you live in, that may be good enough. I, I typically try to shoot for about one to two tenths uh, of total indicated reading. And I'm going to zoom in here on the indicator. And you can see now we are about one or two tenths out of run out or total indicated reading. Uh, and that's, that's typically good. It depends on what types of parts you're making. But um, that is why we need to do that because as you saw from the beginning, with the new tip we just installed, it was not good right out of the gate. It was off about two thousandths of an inch. So as you can see here now, we have it pretty much dialed perfect. So that'll be everything. Thanks for watching.